I love a mid-range handset. The competition in this part of the market is just so much more interesting to me. Now at the top you get your usual best cameras and AI this and that and a phone that's made from glass. But in the mid-range they've got to think about their budgets and selling costs to stay profitable and it just makes for a much better ride. Now I've got here the Honor 50 Lite which is their newest mid-range handset. Now there's something about mid-range handsets and their design. They have this flair to them that the top dogs just don't really seem to go for. Like for example here, the very bright shiny blue rear of the phone. It looks really great though and it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet and it's not quite as premium feeling as a glass covered back on a flagship handset. But the rear plastic bag does curve nicely around to meet the frame around the side. The curve makes it nice to hold in the hand too and gives you a bit more grip. Up top there is also a circle of cameras. There's four in total here, but more on that in a moment. And around the side, you've got the unlock button on the right in a comfortable position for your thumb on one-handed use. And above that is a volume rocker. The unlock button also doubles as your thumbprint scanner, so you can unlock the phone using biometrics there. Around the front is a 6.67 inch screen with a resolution of 1080 by 2376 and a pixel density of 391. It's bright and text is easily readable and the screen itself is surrounded by quite skinny bezels. There is a small selfie camera notched towards the top right of the screen, which feels like it's kept right out of the way to give you as much real estate on the screen as possible. Media playback also offers some decent colors too and YouTube videos and even Netflix did look great. Sound quality has left a lot to be desired though, but it's not out of place in mid-range handset markets. Just don't expect glorious sound to come from this device. The Honor 50 Lite when it was shipped to me was running Android 11 and I've not been told if Android 12 will be making its way to the handset. It is using the Magic UI 4.2, which is fairly nice to use. What wasn't expected though is the amount of bloatware that came pre-installed. There are a few games in a folder on the home screen and TrainPal, Trip.com and WPS Office. All apps that I would never touch if I had the choice so I did uninstall them. The optimizer saves battery power, cleaning up files and data usage as well as a virus scam. There is also an honor store that makes you look at two adverts every time you open it and shows you phones and accessories you can buy. And the honor club which shows you honor news and gives you some free wallpapers and stuff like that. There's no real unique settings inside of the menu on the Honor 50 Lite either. And if you're a current Android user, everything will be nice and self-explanatory. One interesting thing when setting up the phone though was the fact that I could choose a search engine provider. Now, of course, Google was there and that was my go-to choice being in the UK. But I also had the choice of Ecosia, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Bing, GMX, Norton Safe Search, Ask.com, Fair Search, searchmail.ru, Yandex and Presearch, of which I've probably only heard of a few of them, and Yandex because we went into one of their self-driving cars in Vegas in last CES, which there'll be a link up the top for you. Inside the phone, or inside this phone should I say, you can find a Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 processor and six gigabyte of RAM memory. There's an eight gigabyte variant too. There's a decent amount of storage coming in at 128 gig though it is quickly becoming the norm for mobile handsets now as cameras and video capabilities increase. Geekbench 5 threw back a result of 307 on a single core score and 1,274 as a multi-core score, which for a mid-range phone is pretty decent and was easily enough to keep up with the likes of the Redmi Note 7. The highlight though here is the camera as it's featuring four individual snappers that all do something different. Now going clockwise around the device, you have a 64 megapixel main camera with a two megapixel depth camera. The third is a two megapixel macro lens. And the last is a 17 millimeter, eight megapixel wide angle camera. All sensors have an F 2.4 aperture, except the main camera that hits F 1.9. The quality of the images here are okay. They'll suit and upload to social media, but don't expect fine quality of the newer Samsung's or iPhones that have recently hit the market. However, saying that it's really nice having a dedicated 
quality macro lens as these images actually came out looking quite decent. So if you're going to be a macro photographer, you're going to be happy here. Colors, however, do feel very muted, so make sure you get a copy of Snapseed to boost that vibrance and saturation, or even just edit the photos inside of Instagram before you post. So camera modes are on par with other handsets out there, including a pro mode for changing your settings manually and a panorama, slow motion, time lapse, and all of that kind of jazz. The HDR mode isn't great at all and really struggle to expose for both lower light levels and blown out highlights, like the scene of my studio now, where the window was still, well, really blown out. Portrait mode was nice, but the separation between the subject and background wasn't the best, and I've definitely seen better from mid-range handsets. There's an aperture mode that can drop right down to f0.95, but it looks quite false and didn't really produce a super sharp image, and the focus was very heavily reliant on where you tapped on your subject. Tap their face and everything else just dropped from focus. It definitely needed some refining for their next set of handsets, that's for sure. When you switch it over to video mode, just gotta to touch the screen to activate the camera, you will get, if I dive into the settings here, get a video resolution of 1080p, 16 by 9, 720p, and then the frame rate is 30 FPS. So again, not the best, you're not filming in 4K here, so uh, you can change the aspect ratio between four by three, one by one, or full screen as well. So again, not the best in terms of video performance either. Another highlight which actually sits on par with better flagship phones out there is the battery life. You've got a 4,300 milliamp hour battery with a 66 watt fast charge capability and that's what's exciting about it. The phone easily lasted me all day and I work in social media for my day job. So my phone usage is among the high users of this world and the phone lasted me all day. I did have to charge it when I got home though, but I never felt like I needed to take a charger with me in my bag to plug it in when I got to the office. It's just a nice touch on such a mid-range handset. The Honor 50 Lite isn't a bad phone despite its downfalls with the camera. It's definitely fast enough to handle all of your daily needs and so social media, that kind of thing. The screen is great and produces some nice images for media playback, for YouTube or your on-demand streaming apps. And the phone actually does look really, really cool. I've got it in blue here, but they do a black and a silver version too, if this is too, too out there and too jazzy for you. It's a real big shame about the camera quality. If the photos were better, then this phone could be the unstoppable handset in the mid-range market, but they've really got to improve that first. So thank you very much for checking out our video review of the Honor 50 Lite. If you enjoyed this video, then do hit that like button. Subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos, and also let us know in the comments down below if you would go for an Honor 50 Lite or what other mid-range handsets do you think we should be taking a look at comparing it to the 50 Lite. Let us know in the comments below. As I say, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.